Hey, today we're going to talk about Hamiltonian systems. So let's start by presenting an example. We're going to look at the following system, dx over dt equals y and dy over dt equals x minus x squared. Okay, so here's a nonlinear system. Uh, it's not going to be likely that we, well, this one's, yeah, it's not going to be likely that we can solve this. So let's take a look at the slope field for this system. And here is a plot of the slope field here. dx over dt is y, dy over dt is x minus x squared. And we see that solutions will move along the curve suggested by these lines that are going here. Right, here's a solution comes in, whirls its way around, goes out. Here's the one that goes here, like this, right? So that's a little weird. Uh, solutions around here will go in this direction. It looks kind of strange. Um, now, let's consider the following function. H of xy to be 1 half y squared minus 1 half x squared plus one third x cubed. Okay, this is a function of two variables, so to look at a graph of it we need to ordinarily look at a three-dimensional figure, but we're just going to look at the contour lines for this function. And here's a contour plot of this function. And it has some similarities to the slope field here. We have this little swirl here, we have this little circle here, we have these lines going along this side on the left. We have the same thing going on here. <clears throat> and there is obviously going to be a reason for this, or else I wouldn't be discussing these two together. Let's assume that x of t and y of t is a solution. And let's put it into the function h. We'll put x of t in for the x coordinate and y of t in for the y coordinate. Now I'm going to take the derivative of this function h with respect to time, right? I've collapsed it down to one variable. And the way we do this is through the chain rule that we learned in calculus 3. We will take the um, x partial of h, which is negative 2x plus x squared, and we'll multiply it by dx over dt. dx over dt is y. Then to that, we add the y partial of this function, which is just y. This is the y partial of h. And then we multiply that by dy dt, which is x minus x squared. And look, when we gather terms here, we get exactly zero. <clears throat> so what this is saying is the function h doesn't change along solution curves. So we would say h is conserved. h is a conserved quantity, think like conservation of energy or conservation of mass. h doesn't change along solution curves. And so what that says is that says that the level curves of h will be the curves solutions follow. So looking at that contour plot again, our solutions to the system, we don't know what they are, but we know they're going to follow these lines. Now we don't know where they're going to be over a certain period of time, 
We don't know whether they're moving in one direction or another, but we know that they're going to follow along these lines, and that might be enough to get some good information about a system that we can't otherwise solve. So the question we want to address ourselves with is how do we know when we have one of these systems that makes this work? Well, in our last example, let's note that the y partial of h was equal to dx over dt, and the x partial of h was equal to minus dy over dt. And that's what allowed, because of the chain rule, when we added everything together, we got the cancellation. That gave us the cancellation. Okay, so this allows us to make the following definition. A system of differential equations is a Hamiltonian system. if there is a function h of two variables, x and y, so that dx over dt is the, h, is the y partial of h, and dy over dt is minus the x partial of h, just as I wrote above. So that is the definition of a Hamiltonian system. Uh, remember, it's the system that is called Hamiltonian, not the function h. And the question we want to conserve our, or, um, the, sorry, the question we want to concern ourselves with right now is how do we identify a Hamiltonian system? Right? The reason why we want a Hamiltonian system is we can look at a contour plot of h and know the curves along which our solutions are going to flow. So we would like to know whether the system we have is a Hamiltonian. Okay. So to do that, let's take a general dx over dt. Let's say the x partial is a function of two variables, f of x, y. And the y partial is a function of two variables, let's say it's g of x, y. We need f of x, y to be the partial of some other function h with respect to y, and then simultaneously we need g of x, y to be minus the x partial of that very same function. So we're kind of going back and looking for a function h which gives rise to the f and g. So let's take a look at two examples of identifying whether a system is Hamiltonian or not. Let's take a look at this system. dx over dt is equal to sine x cosine y. And dy over dt is equal to 2x minus cosine x sine y. And we want to ask ourselves, is this a Hamiltonian system? Well, the first thing we do is we are going to integrate the dx over dt with respect to y because we want to find out if there's an h whose y partial is equal to this right here. So I take the antiderivative with respect to y and I get sine y, or so, excuse me, sine x, sine y, plus a constant, and not just a constant, it could be a whole bunch of constants that also depend on x, because functions that depend on x are wiped away with a y partial derivative. Okay, now we do a similar thing with dy over dt. We're going to integrate it with respect to x, except we're going to take the opposite of it. When we do that, we get minus x squared plus sine x sine y. And then there might be an additional function that depends on y that 
was differentiated away. Right? So the question is, is there some common function h that we can write as sine x, sine y, plus a part that depends on only x, and minus x squared plus sine x, sine y, and a part that only depends on y? And the answer is yes, there is. Here it is. It's minus x squared plus sine x, sine y. So this system that we started with here is a Hamiltonian system because we were able to find this function h whose uh, y partial is equal to dx over dt and whose x partial's opposite is equal to dy over dt. So that was good. So that now we could we could look at what solutions to this system of equations is going to be based on looking at the contour plot, looking at the level lines of this function h. Let's do another example. Here we're going to have dx over dt equals 1 and dy over dt equals y. So we take an antiderivative with respect to y of 1, and we get y plus some function that could depend on x in a variety of ways. And then we take an antiderivative with respect to x and take its opposite, and that gets us minus xy plus some part that depends on y alone. These two things are compatible, right? We don't have a y down here, but at least we have something that could be mapped into this d function. However, this is not compatible. There's no xy term up in the first function. So this is not a Hamiltonian system. So there isn't a function h that is, a, is something that conserves this equation. So we will not be able to just plot the level lines of some function and learn something about the solution to this differential equation. However, of course, looking at this one, this is not a difficult one to solve to begin with. Okay, that's Hamiltonian systems.